Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Almost to the end of the week here. Yesterday we talked about functions and how we could tell if a set of points was a function or not. Right? We're looking at the x values. We see if they're all different. If they are, it's a function. If they're not, then it's not a function. But today we want to focus on a different aspect of lines. And that's the idea of something that is linear. Okay? The idea of something being linear has two parts to the definition. Both are very important. Um, if something is linear, that means it has a constant, I should say has, has a constant rate of change and is a straight line. So if I'm looking at a graph, anything that is a straight line will be linear, right? Linear, line, you get the idea, right? Um, so we've been looking at linear functions. Anything that's written in slope-intercept form is actually linear, right? It's going to be a straight line. And why is it linear? Well, because it has a constant rate of change. We call that the slope. The slope tells me how much it rises, how much it runs. That's our constant rate of change. So, for example, I know that the equation y equals 2x plus 4 is linear because it has a constant rate of change in 2. It's going to rise 2, it's going to run 1, rise 2, run 1, right? But sometimes it's not so easy, right? If, uh, for example, if I have an equation um, that's not in slope-intercept form, how do I know if it's linear? Well, uh, there's, some, there's a couple things we can look for. So um, we just said y equals 2x plus 4 is in slope-intercept form. Now we've looked at some equations that you could rewrite in slope-intercept form. Like for example, um, 5x minus 3y equals 21. Um, we said that we could solve this for y. Subtract 5x from both sides. And give me negative 3y equals 21 minus 5x. And then divide both sides by negative 3. 21 divided by negative 3 is negative 7. Negative 5 divided by negative 3 is going to be positive 5 thirds x. And then you obviously can see that that's in slope So form. We could just switch the uh, two pieces here. Um, 5 thirds x plus negative 7. So um, how do I know that an equation is just not like that? Because that one's obviously going to be linear. Because I can rewrite it and it would have a slope of up 5 over 3. Well, there's a couple things that I want you to look out for. And they will kind of help you to see if this equation is linear or not. It can be written in slope-intercept form. Uh, so the first one is exponents. I'm going to write not linear. So if we have exponents, and what I mean by that is um, somewhere in here, y equals 3x squared plus 7. Um, I, if I have a variable with an exponent on it, or if my exponent is my variable. Um, so, for example, y equals um, 6 to the x. Any of those things where a variable has an exponent or an exponent is a variable, that's going to make an equation not linear anymore. Okay? So that's, that's example one you want to look out for. The sneakiest one is x in the denominator. Denominator. So, for example, if we had um, y equals 3 over x, that's actually not going to be linear either. Um, that's kind of a weird one. Uh, but all of you who try to divide by x, you're like, oh, let's just divide by x. Here's a really good example. Actually, if we had x in the bottom of a fraction, that's going to make it not linear anymore. Um, so that's a, that's a problem for us if we have x in the bottom. Um, so we don't want exponents, we don't want x in the bottom, 
We don't want square roots. So if I had um, y equals square root of x plus 6. Um, if I have an, a variable under a square root, that is also going to make this not linear. Okay? So those are the big three that I think you could see. Um, if you don't have any of these three, you probably can combine like terms and rearrange stuff and get it in a slope intercept form. So um, if you do, you can obviously put it in slope intercept form. And then you can see it's definitely linear because it has a constant rate of change. If not, these are all going to be special things that we're going to talk about pretty much in Algebra 1. Um, so when you guys get to Algebra 1 next year, you'll have some basis of things that are not linear, right? Um, what if I have a table of values, right? If I have a graph, it's pretty easy. I'm just looking, is it a straight line? Um, yeah, I guess we can do that. So if I had a graph... Any straight line. It could be horizontal, could be vertical, right? Or it could just look like this. All of those are linear equations. Um, most of them are linear functions, right? We said um, in class uh, yesterday, we talked about how the only one that's linear but not a function is uh, the straight vertical line, which is x equals a number because its slope is undefined, right? Um, but it's not going to pass the vertical line test if it is a vertical line. So um, in red here, or I'm sorry, in blue here, um, there's lots of things we can have that are not linear. We can have parabolas that kind of curve like this. We can have exponential growth functions like this. We can have crazy graphs that kind of look like this and like this. So all sorts of stuff. Ooh, I forgot about these ones. Whoop. There's ones that look like that. Um, so all sorts of stuff. If they curve, not linear. If they are straight, they are linear. All right, so then we'll, fi we'll finish up with tables. What about tables? How do I know if a table is a linear function or not? Well, um, let's see. X and Y. Um, two, four, five, eight, nine, negative six, two, six, eighteen, twenty-two. All right, so here's our table. And I'm looking at it, I'm saying, huh, I wonder if that thing is linear or not. Uh, I can tell you if it's a function, right? I'm looking at the x values, they're all different. So yes, it's definitely a function. Um, but if I want to tell if a table of values is linear, uh, I could graph it, but that doesn't sound very fun. I don't want to graph a y-axis all the way to 22. I don't know about you guys. Um, I could try to write it in slope-intercept form. But in order to do that, I would have to do part of the reason, part of the definition of linear, right? If it's linear, it has to have a constant rate of change. So if I check its slope and see it's constant throughout the whole table, that would be enough to tell me that this is linear. Um, so remember, slope is the change in y, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. x goes on the bottom. So instead of using my formula like 15 times, we can kind of just look at how these change. So to get from negative 6 to 2, that's positive 8. I'm going to add 8. How do you get from 2 to 4? Uh, you're going to add 2. So that would be the slope, 8 over 2, which simplifies to 4. And then I can keep going with that, right? How do you get from 2 to 6? I can add 4. From 4 to 5, that's plus 1. 4 over 1 simplifies to 4 also. How about 6 to 18? That looks like 12 plus 12. 5 to 8 is plus 3. 12 over 3 is still 4. And remember, I have to check all of them because if it just worked on all of them and then didn't work at the last bit, that would not be linear anymore. It would have to have a constant rate of change the entire time. Um, that would be plus 4. That would be plus 1. 
And of course, four over one is also equal to four. So one of the methods I could do is just kind of check to see if my slope is constant throughout the entire table. If at any time we see my slope is not constant, um, then I can say that thing is not linear. All right. Uh, yeah, we got time. So if I went with this one, x, y, uh, let's go. Negative four, negative seven, negative 10, negative 13, negative 16. All right, if we're looking here, I wanna know, hey, you guys, is this linear or not? Um, well, it does seem like it has a pattern, I would say, um, right? So from negative four to negative seven, it would go down three, as this one up one. So that'd be negative three over one. So is that gonna be constant, consistent throughout? That'd go down three, that'd go up one. That'd go down three, that'd go up one. That would go down three, that goes up two. Oh, so check this out. All of them match up, negative three over one, negative three over one, simplify to negative three, except the bottom one, that'd be negative three over two. And that's gonna be a little bit different than negative three over one. So this is not linear. It's a non-linear function because all of a sudden we have a different rate of change here at the end. So if I can find a constant rate of change, a slope that's gonna work throughout the whole thing, it's definitely linear. If not, uh, there's not a way I'm gonna be able to write that in slope intercept form because it is non-linear function. Tomorrow we will compare some linear functions and we'll just keep using this idea of linear and this idea of function in kind of everything that we talk about, okay? Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you guys later.